What's up guys? So one of the questions that I get asked a lot on stream is why I've set my base up the way I have, whether it be the kitchen, sleeping quarters, workshop, storage, whatever. So I thought I'd make a couple short videos giving my best tips for how to make an efficient base. So in this video, I'm going to talk about sleeping arrangements and what I think is most efficient, especially early game. Now, why should we care about bedroom design? A bed is a bed, right? <laughs> Wrong. Uh, pawns will have 24 seven mood buffs or debuffs depending on their sleeping arrangements. So setting up your rooms right can really hurt or help your colony, especially early on when you're probably just struggling to maintain a positive mood. So before we really get into this, I just wanna mention that for this video, I only chose pawns that do not have any traits that affect how they feel about their living quarters. So for example, um, a trait like jealous, greedy, uh, aesthetic, or the tunneler meme as part of an ideology, which I'm not even playing with ideology on, all of those will affect how your pawns feel. Uh, so I specifically chose pawns that do not have any of those traits. So we've just landed and um, I built these two rooms here just to kind of show you guys which is better. Um, a coffin sized bedroom here or you know a slightly larger barracks. Um, if you turn on your room stat overlay down in the bottom corner when you hover over a room it will tell you the overall impressiveness and that is what determines um, how your pawn feels about it. And that impressiveness is calculated by combining all those other factors down below, wealth, space, beauty, and cleanliness. Now, space does matter, but it only matters when your pawn is awake and in that space. So for example, even though this is like a very cramped interior in here where Or is sleeping, if you actually go into her needs, she thinks it's spacious. A pawn will always have a plus five spacious interior buff when they are asleep. I do not know why that is, but I have just found it to be the case. She doesn't even have room to be awake in this bedroom because it's so tiny. So she's never gonna be getting that debuff for a cramped interior. Now here it says it's rather tight, but if we check on Rodion, we'll find that once again, he also has that spacious interior buff. So size only matters to the degree that it is affecting the overall impressiveness of the room. All right, so now that everyone is asleep, let's take a look at what the actual moodlets are and how they actually feel about their sleeping situation. Now, Or has a negative four for an awful bedroom. Now let's look at how Inessa feels about her awful barracks. You can see she has a negative seven from an awful barrack, plus a negative one for disturbed sleep when Rodion came in and woke her up. Um, so overall, that is a negative eight for sleeping in awful barracks compared to negative four for sleeping in an awful bedroom. And the disturbed sleep can actually stack. I've only seen it stack up to three times, uh, but it could be even worse than a minus eight if your pawn was interrupted a lot. All right. so. An awful private bedroom is better than an awful barracks, but let's see what happens if we spruce up these barracks a little bit. So now that we have spruced up this barracks a little bit, they're now mediocre, which is two tiers above awful. It goes awful, dull, mediocre, um, decent, slightly impressive, somewhat impressive, very impressive, and unbelievably impressive. So we are on the third tier up right now, and Ines is currently at a negative one for disturbed sleep when Rodion got up plus that negative four for the mediocre barrack. So she's at negative five total for her sleeping situation, even though these barracks look pretty cozy, pretty nice to me, um, but compared to this coffin sized, no floor bedroom, um, they're actually worse off in these barracks. In fact, the awful bedroom will remain superior to barracks all the way up until you have a slightly impressive barracks where we finally only get a negative two debuff for being in a slightly impressive barracks. The reasoning being, uh, I got to sleep in a pretty nice barrack, but I really don't like sharing a room with others. Uh, but keep in mind, you have to add at least a negative one for disturbed sleep. Usually it will stack two to three times depending on how many pawns you have staying in that room. So this is kind of the point at which these barracks become equal to this awful bedroom. So we've established that early game private rooms are always best. So what's the best way to set them up to avoid that negative four awful bedroom debuff? Well, the minimum size threshold to not be awful is six tiles. So I've made a two by three room and floored it. So right away, we can see that the room quality has increased to the next tier, dull. And there is no debuff for a dull bedroom. You can see right here that she has no bedroom related debuffs anymore. She just doesn't care. And also, even though this is a cramped interior because she's asleep, once again, we only have a plus five for spacious interior. So the size of the bedroom does not matter past this point. 
unless you are trying to make a super duper impressive bedroom. The only risky thing about uh, using this bedroom size is that even like one speck of dirt or trash in this room will torpedo your impressiveness back down into awful. So you really have to stay on top of keeping it clean. That's why I love to use the mod cleaning area. Um, it just keeps your bases loads cleaner by allowing you to specify exactly what areas you want cleaned. So I highly recommend that mod if you don't already use it. So what about if we spruced up the room even more? Um, you can see now I've built a mediocre bedroom. Um, so I'm one tier up from dull over here, mediocre. I've added in stone tiles. Of course, they're granite, not marble. You know, a dresser, a potted rose, an end table. The bedroom is mediocre. Let's see how Or feels about it. Shockingly, she feels no differently about this bedroom than she does this one. There is absolutely no difference. The only tiny difference is that she's extremely comfortable, uh, plus two more in this bedroom, but only because I added an end table. You can also add an end table into a room this size uh, for the same result. So I would actually argue that making rooms that look like this, as I've been doing for most of my RimWorld career, is actually pointless. Either go bigger or go home, no, or, or stay two by three. Side note, you can speed through tiers quite quickly if you're making a mountain base and smoothing all your walls and floors. Um, smooth walls, smooth floors are extra pretty and add extra wealth. So even like a modestly decorated or like no decorations at all, a uh, four by four room ends up being decent. And with decent, we finally start to see a positive mood effect instead of it just being neutral. Let's see. Yeah, we have a decent bedroom plus two. So that doesn't take up too much space. If we're just a three by three, we're still mediocre, but as soon as we bump up that space, all that smoothed floor adds enough beauty and enough wealth that it ends up positively affecting your pond's mood. So it's clear that the two by three floored, clean, dull or mediocre bedroom is the most efficient way to keep ponds happy or at least neutral about their sleeping arrangements. A dull but private room is even roughly equal to an unbelievably impressive barrack, which gives plus three, but then can give minus one, two, or three nightly for disturbed sleep, which would cancel out completely. So in summary, your ponds will basically always be happier sleeping in a private room, regardless of quality, than they would be sharing impressive barracks. Uh, this was news to me as I've long been operating under the assumption that a decent shared sleeping space would be better than awful individual spaces, so I'm glad I looked into it. I would love to know how you set up your sleeping quarters in your colonies, so let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.